Hello everyone, my name is Pavlo Lutzig and I represent the Division of Cancer Epigenomics at the KFZ in Heidelberg and uh, Department of Oncology at Karl Leuven. Uh, today I want to speak about democratizing access to scientific workflows with work flux. So our work is motivated by a well-established notion of a reproducibility crisis in biomedical research. So among 1,600 researchers uh, surveyed by Nature in 2016, almost 80% agreed that there is, a, uh, so there is a, some kind of reproducibility crisis and um, almost half considered to, uh, to be significant. And, uh, since then, uh, the situation didn't improve significantly. So among the reasons which uh, the researchers uh, named uh, as underlying this crisis, uh, many uh, have something to do with data analysis, including low statistical power, not enough replication, uh, unavailability of methods, code, and data, uh, as well as lack of technical expertise for reproduction. So to give you a context, um, I want to introduce our work uh, at the KFZ. Uh, within the division of cancer epigenomics, where I've been leading a computational group since 2019. One of our tasks was uh, to enable continuous support of uh, epigenomic da data lifecycle. And uh, uh, the, the division consisted of 30 to 40 researchers, among which five to seven were bioinformaticians under my supervision. And we dealt with large and rapidly expanding set of data types, including whole genome bisulfide sequencing for DNA methylation, uh, attic sequencing for chromatin accessibility, chip seek, and um, uh, several other alternative protocols for chromatin analysis. So uh, when we started establishing uh, the data analysis infrastructure, we looked and surveyed uh, the possibilities uh, and uh, at these well-known pages, uh, we found dozens and dozens of different frameworks, engines, uh, systems, and so on. Uh, so it was very difficult to orient ourselves. Um, nonetheless, in the recent years, there are several market leaders, including NextFlow, SnakeMake, and two uh, initiatives which aim to describe the workflows independent of their uh, of the implementation of the workflow si uh, management systems including workflow description language WIDL and the and the common workflow language uh, I will not go into detail uh, describing the advantages of common workflow language so what attracted us was its open and extensible specification concept a truly community-driven project. Uh, again, it's independence of a specific implementation, and this gave, gave us a lot of flexibility with respect to computational infrastructure at the KFZ. And I think the most important advantage was explicit, exhaustive, and uh, typed description of inputs and outputs for all, all the steps and for the for sub-workflows and workflows. Uh, which, in my opinion, is one of the strongest advantages and uh, enables the developers to build upon CWL. And I hope we I can give you an example of that in this talk. Uh, so using CWL, we created workflows for all major types of data we work with, including whole genome bisulfide sequencing, attack sequencing, chip sequencing, and further protocols for chromatin analysis. All these workflows are available uh, from our GitHub organization, Comp Epigen. Uh, so the next problem we faced when we uh, tried to deploy these workflows and made them available uh, to our division, and I think the situation is very similar in many other research groups, uh, big or small. So we have experimentalists who generate the data and are the most interested party in obtaining uh, the results. So we were uh, the, the workflow developers and uh, we create the logics of data analysis and uh, make it available 
through one of the languages, be it CWL or anything else. Of course, there is a HPC infrastructure maintained by specialized engineers at the level of organizations and institutions. So what we notice there, there is a considerable uh, barrier for the experimentalists to apply workflows simply because <clears throat> most of the uh, steps involve command line uh, interfaces. So like uh, deployment of, of the workflow management system, deployment of workflows and dependencies, configuration of the uh, jobs, execution and heterogeneous environments, even accessing results, especially a large scale uh, analysis results, large files, uh, monitoring the analysis and reporting uh, results, everything we call provenance. Uh, in the workflow world, this often includes common line interfaces. Uh, and yeah, as we know in biomedicine, the clinicians and bio biological researchers, they are not always familiar with the common line, although the situation is improving rapidly. So uh, at that time, uh, there were already alternatives, including Galaxy project. So uh, it was already quite popular back then uh, when we started working on, on, uh, on this software. Um, however, when we examined the possibility to use Galaxy within our division, uh, we, um, uh, we found several things not working, including the significant administration overhead, uh, for installing and maintaining a Galaxy instance. Uh, it's kind of concept uh, which makes it uh, suitable for large user bases, organizations and communities. But uh, yeah, it's uh, often an overkill for small groups. And it's uh, Galaxy has a sort of Swiss knife philosophy. All possibilities are already either pre-configured or can be added yeah, and uh, sometimes this is again too much. Uh, at that time, there was no uh, easy and reproducible uh, configuration of bad jobs, and we'll come back to it and to our solution. Uh, again, the main focus of Galaxy was uh, uh, not workflows, but single tools. Uh, and yeah, the, concerning the workflows, uh, there was own workflow ecosystem and no support of popular workflow languages, although it's not, it has now changed with the addition of CWL support very recently. Uh, so Kesten Breuer, who was a student in my group, uh, an enthusiast of workflows, uh, he designed and implemented a solution which we uh, initially called CW Lab and later renamed to Workflux. So it's essentially graphical framework which hides all the complexity of workflow deployment, uh, execution uh, and monitoring uh, and accessing the results under the hood and makes it the experience workflow experience uh, very comfortable for uh, the experiment to this. So this is the democratization uh, in essence because now not only the computer, uh, geeks, let's say, can uh, can perform the complex analysis, but also everybody, uh, yeah, who can who knows the data and knows how to use Workflux. Uh, so this is uh, how Workflux looks. Uh, so it's a very simplistic web interface. Yeah, uh, there's a, just a landing page and three tabs for different tasks, and I will go through each task of the task in detail. Uh, so first, uh, a bit of an architectural outline and, and an overview of the features. So Workflux allows you to, um, allows the users to import um, common workflow language workflows from many sources, including public repositories, but also like locally from single files. Uh, so the, in the front end, they're imported and uh, the, in the same time, the backend processes the workflow and based on the workflow structure solely, 
creates a, a parameter form, either HTML or Excel uh, or open office spreadsheets or open document format. And uh, uh, for, for the spreadsheets, it creates templates. And this way the user configures the jobs and uh, the backend generates uh, CWL job files and YAML or JSON, and they are sent to the execution API. So we have a highly configurable, configurable execution API, which allows you to connect uh, to essentially any type of CWL uh, supporting infrastructure, be it local execution with a reference implementation CWL tool, or HPC cluster setup, for example, with Toil or cloud-based setup with Cromwell, uh, you name it. And uh, yeah, everything is extremely lightweight, easy to set up and adapt to concrete needs of the users. Uh, so the first step is the import. So there are many options such as public URL, uh, including GitHub. So this is extremely convenient. You just copy a GitHub URL in raw format and you have the workflow imported, but also other uh, options exist, including tool and workflow repository services. Uh, next for the job configuration. So all the input parameters are analyzed and uh, according to a type, either an HTML input uh, created or you get a properly configured template uh, for, for your spreadsheet. <clears throat> so through the spreadsheets, it's possible uh, to configure batch jobs. So it runs for many samples. Uh, so the, the jobs are automatically validated. Um, the input files are automatically searched for on connected storage. Um, and all the built-in documentation from CWL doc tags is transferred to the tooltips in, uh, in the HTML form. So once the jobs are configured, you can execute them using a minimalistic running interface. Uh, so you can select an execution profile, um, so which describes the connection to the uh, computing infrastructure. And you, of course, can so select the load. So how, how many job runs will be started in parallel and so on. And there is, of course, a possibility to stop the job, re reset it, delete it, uh, and so on. Uh, finally, each job comes with possibilities to, mo to uh, monitor it completely and report the results. So first of all, uh, to enable the provenance of parameters, so you have the actual CWL input file displayed in the respective tab. There is also dynamically refreshed execution logs and an interface to access the, uh, the output files. Uh, they can be downloaded directly or as an uh, archive of the complete output directory. So a few technical details. Uh, the front end of Workflux is based on React. And it's a single page web app. And uh, through Ajax, uh, it uh, communicates with a Flask-based Flask backend. Uh, all the data can be saved in a relational database the SQL Lite, MySQL, anything else, uh, uh, any database of your preference. And there, is, there are layers to organize uh, things for each user. Yeah, all the workflows and jobs are registered. So ex execution profile uh, is essentially a structured text file and it allows you to send a job via Python bash PowerShell interface. And uh, except for execution step itself, there, there is a possibility to add uh, pre and post-processing scripts 
job evaluation and clean up download scripts. And uh, the deployment of Workflux is very simple, either for virtual environments as a Python package or a Docker container. So uh, we have tested Workflux in intensively uh, within the uh, context of interdisciplinary research groups with us and our collaborators and works very nicely. So it can be used locally as a desktop application uh, with HPCs and uh, in clusters and uh, yeah, in protected clouds uh, and other types of infrastructure. And yeah, this is all requiring minimal setup. So we are expanding it towards like larger organizational scale. So trying to integrate GA4GH standards for workflow execution, data access, add multi-user, multi-project management uh, execution on publicly available infrastructure and uh, yeah, enabling collaborative work on protected data. Uh, so we also think of adding support for further workflow languages, including Widdle, which will probably easier uh, due to similar concepts uh, behind, but also SnakeMake and NextFlow, which do not have such clear cut interfaces, uh, which would enable uh, automated configuration and uh, creation of spreadsheets or HTML forms. I want to integrate deeper with, with the initiatives around the European scientific cloud and resources. So be state of the art in that respect. Um, we want to provide images for major commercial cloud providers, uh, such as Google, Microsoft, or Amazon clouds, and we want to link to large data resources, biomedical databases, object storage, and so on. So if you like this concept, try Workflux out. It's available freely under Apache 2.0 license from the Workflux organizations. And we, of course, welcome feedback uh, and all contributions. Uh, thanks so much for your attention. I'm happy to answer your questions in the Q&A. Bye.